this Paul Pierce LeBron James thing is kind of like Nike against Reebok. Did you know in 1984 Nike and Reebok were equals? Then some guy named Michael Jordan signed with Nike. Now only one of them considers it a rivalry. Paul Pierce just keeps taking shots and it shows how incredibly insecure and petty he is. You probably saw he left LeBron off his top five players of all time. Well, in this video, we will prove the truth false. That'll take like two seconds. Then we'll figure out why Paul Pierce is so insecure about his place in the game. Kendrick Perkins revealed the origin of the one-sided beef. We'll break down how LeBron James completely owned Paul Pierce through the years. Hey, it's Casey, host of the AM Hoops YouTube channel and the podcast, dropping a fresh AM Hoops pod every Friday morning. Hit subscribe and notifications. It helps out the channel while we're still waiting for games to come back, making five videos per week. Now, after the whole not in my top five thing, Paul Pierce doubled down on Twitter, said LeBron wasn't in his top seven. He says Shaq is number six, Tim Duncan is number seven. I mean, I love me some Duncan, but that's ridiculous. His entire argument basically is that LeBron had to chase championships while other guys built a dynasty. What has LeBron did to build up any organization? So in saying that, Kareem, look at the names that I said. Kareem, Magic, Jordan, Tim Duncan, Kobe, uh, Bird. These guys are all top 10 players who either help build up their organization or continue the tradition. And that actually sounds like a legit argument. And then you bring, I don't know, logic into it. What a shot by LeBron James! Kobe Bryant was drafted to a team that had just traded for an all-time great in Shaq. Magic Johnson was drafted to a team with another all-time great in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem won in Milwaukee. He had Oscar Robertson, another all-time great. Yes, LeBron had to go find his all-time teammates because the Cleveland front office was all-time bad. They could not build a championship-level team around LeBron James, so he was forced to go elsewhere. Then there's the stats. LeBron's the third leading scorer in NBA history. He'll probably be number one. He's number eight all-time in assists, the only guy top 10 in both. He's tied for the most all-NBA selections third most all-stars. LeBron James is unquestionably a top five NBA player of all time. Like the only guy who doesn't think so is Paul Pierce because he's a LeBron hater. He has always been a LeBron hater, it seems like. Kendrick Perkins broke down where this all started early on in LeBron's career during a preseason game. You know, when LeBron was coming into the league, he was getting a lot of heat from players. Oh, he's not going to do that to us the chosen one, wait till he play against grown men. So Paul actually spits over there at the bench, right? The ultimate disrespect, okay? Okay, so he's spitting at a second year player in the preseason because he's called the chosen one. Uh, that's called insecure as hell. If you know you're the better player, you don't react like that. You laugh it off. You don't even think about it. Instead, Pierce already knows LeBron is better than he is, and he's jealous. James over Pierce. Paul Pierce has a long track record of being insecure about his place in NBA history. Let's run through the examples. Number one, that time he said he was a better player than Dwayne Wade. Who's the better NBA player? That's easy. I can say that off the bat. That's me. <laughs> if you give me Shaq. If you give me LeBron, they did. They called the big three. And, 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 yeah, I, we got that late, but like early in my career. If, I mean, what are you if doing? If you right give now? me these guys early in my career. Do we really need to break this down? D Wade carried his team to a win in the finals in 06 before he got LeBron James as a teammate. Wade is the third best shooting guard of all time behind Jordan and Kobe. This is not close. Example number two forcing the Celtics to not show Isaiah Thomas's tribute video. The Cavaliers happened to be playing in Boston on Paul Pierce Jersey retirement night. IT had some good years in Boston, of course. They wanted to honor that with like a minute tribute on the Jumbotron, but Pierce shut it down. He talked to the GM Danny Ainge himself and told them not to run it. The sad thing about this is IT later said, oh, well, he would have asked them not to show it anyway. So it would have worked out if Paul Pierce would have just waited a minute. Instead, he comes off as petty and insecure. The funny thing is what happened during the game. LeBron and the Cavs blew out the seas. Paul Pierce's face was hilarious. LeBron's face was hilarious too. Example three, not wearing LeBron's. 
After Pierce left the Wizards, media asked Marcin Gortat what he learned from the truth. He said, quote, not to wear LeBron James' shoes to practice. That seems a little petty. You might call it competitive, but do you really think if Pierce had a shoe, LeBron would even be able to recognize what they looked like, let alone order his teammates to take them off? Nope, it is a one-sided rivalry that at one point was actually pretty even. After the spitting incident, the Cavs and Celtics battled for years. LeBron ruined one of Pierce's best nights ever. He dropped a career-high 50 points. LeBron had 43, 12 boards, 11 assists, four blocks, and the win. That sucks. The Celtics were one of the early roadblocks to LeBron getting a ring. It actually reminds me of Isaiah Thomas and Michael Jordan. MJ had to get through the Pistons, but once he did get through, they just became a detail in his journey. Isaiah Thomas to this day does not like to admit Jordan's greatness. He's still bitter. But to be fair, unlike LeBron, MJ's bitter too. In 2008, the Seas beat the Cavs. LeBron and Pierce battled in game seven. LeBron had 45, Pierce had 41. Boston won that, won the finals, and the truth was finals MVP. Without a doubt, his best year in the one-sided rivalry and in his career. Two years later, the Celtics won again, this time as underdogs. Cleveland was the one seed, Celtics were the four, but the Seas won in six games. This was the infamous loss that sent LeBron to South Beach. Recently, Kevin Garnett has bragged about it. Man, listen, let me say something to you. The Seas, we didn't give a fuck about LeBron. We didn't fear LeBron and we didn't think that he can beat all five of us. And that's how it felt. He was trying to consolidate because he didn't want the pressure on him. You understand? Paul Pierce had fun taking shots. Why do you think he moved to Miami Beats? <laughs> Come on now, I sent the U-Haul down there. Set one what of the time this works out? Of all time after you it's guys a beat It's a pleasure bringing my talents to South oh. Beach. <laughs> sent the U-Haul, averaging 13 and a half points per game that year. But sure. Then things changed. In 2011, the Heat beat the Seas in an easy five games. LeBron still lost to the Mavericks in the finals, but the Celtics were never the same. In fact, they lost one of their big three. Ray Allen left Paul Pierce and KG to become a Miami Heat. He took less money too. Boston offered 12 million bucks for two years. Miami gave him just 9 million for three years. Watching your close friend and teammate go to your rival and the guy you hate the most, LeBron James, watching him win a chip probably made Pierce hate LeBron even more and was a slap in the face. Then there was that time in 2014 when Pierce shoved LeBron hard during a preseason game. Later that season in the playoffs, he demanded he would guard LeBron because he, quote, knew his tendencies better than anyone. And LeBron was insanely dominant. He led the Heat in scoring all five games. In game four, he set a Miami playoff scoring record with 49 points on 67% shooting. That's embarrassing. I think it was also embarrassing when he talked trash to LeBron during game seven against the Cavs as a retired player. What are you doing? This was in 2018. Of course, the Cavs went on to the finals. And through all of this, LeBron still takes the high road. It's so hard to take the high road. Here's what LeBron said when he was asked to talk about Paul Pierce before he retired in 2017. You know, for 19 years, um, you know, put it, you know, his mark on his game. Um, somebody I've had a lot of battles with, somebody I've always respected, you know, and uh, competed against, you know, and uh, you know, pushed me in Eastern Conference, you know, for quite a while. So, um, you know, a champion, you know, and um, you know, his numbers and what he's able to do out on the floor speaks for himself. So. Obviously, his next stop is, uh, you know, the Hall of Fame, and, you know, uh, it's a great, uh, great ride. That is the high road. To say that about a guy who spit in your face when you're coming into the league, who talks trash about you every chance he gets, and who's dying to end your career on TV. We're at the start of the Kevin Durant era. Okay, oh, but, and the end, but are we and at the end, Leonard. And the end of the LeBron era. Or Kawhi Leonard. You can tell that LeBron doesn't spend one minute of his day worrying about Paul Pierce, but Pierce is obsessed with LeBron James. I mean, I don't even expect LeBron to respond to any of this. Look, I get that being competitive, especially against LeBron James, is what made Paul Pierce Paul Pierce, but this isn't being competitive. This is being insecure and petty, and he is not bringing up his own case and his place in the game by bringing down one of the greatest NBA players of all time.
Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.